The second weekend of the Mythic Dungeon International has just finished, with an exciting final series between the North American team Donuts and the European team Perplexed. My name is Dratnos, and today we're going to take a look at Perplexed's incredible 19-minute run in a plus 23 Algathar Academy. All talents and builds used by the players can be found via Raider.io in the description below. Perplexed wasted no time getting started and used Shroud of Concealment to skip past two nasty packs of Mana Fiends and Animated Weapons before setting up an ambitious pull of all three of the packs that are required to summon Veximus. The Arcane Ravager is a huge problem in this area, so they bring it into this pull as well so that they can pump damage into it with their Bloodlust while AoEing everything down. But they don't want Arcane Foragers involved just yet, so they use Mass Entanglement to keep them rooted for later. In a plus 23 Fortified, with Sanguine active, this pull is unbelievably dangerous, and it cost Perplex their Bloodlust, two deaths, one battle res, and still ended up putting several million points of Sanguine healing on the board. Because they had more death than battle res is available, they made the decision to delay pulling the boss and instead fight the Mana Worms until Wolf Disco finished running back to rejoin the pull. Veximus began with Divine Field using his defensives for offense, popping Shield Wall to give him the safety to fully channel a Manic Grief Torch into the boss. With several enemies still alive, it was vital that Perplexed avoided any Sanguine healing onto Veximus. After the Arcane Elemental fell, Perplexed geared up for one of the most dangerous pulls in the dungeon. This Bridge Pull and the Arcane Ravager Patrol are each individually scary, but Perplexed managed to combine both packs into a huge 15% enemy forces pull. To help keep it under control, Ryson made sure to stand close to the pack so that the Arcane Ravager wouldn't leap far away and the three melee DPS wouldn't have to lose uptime. Up next is one of the best uses of the snapping mechanic that we've seen so far in Dragonflight. Divine hops off his mount before taking the wind current up to the Guardian Sentry. Before he leaves, a shine casts Tricks of the Trade on him and then tags a few packs, getting in combat with them but redirecting the threat to Divine instead. After a few seconds, those enemies will snap, teleporting to Divine, but now a shine is in combat so he needs to use Vanish to drop combat so that he can use the wind current and rejoin the pull. After the Guardian Sentry pull is over, Perplexed set up another snap using the same technique to send over three packs of Lashers from the Overgrown Ancient area to Divine and the rest of the team while they're fighting the birds before Croth. This is extremely efficient because otherwise Perplex would be forced to fight one pack at a time in this area, which is unacceptably slow in an MDI setting. Croth is a scary boss, and notably Perplex chose to activate the goal of the Rushing Winds first rather than the goal of the Searing Blaze, meaning they had to deal with winds for most of the fight but this was a decision informed by their comp of three melee DPS who, unlike some range specs, have a very easy time running against the wind without losing any damage. The Overgrown Ancient was already waiting to be pulled when Perplexed arrived because of the Lashers being snapped and killed earlier. They did still have some Skitterflies to fight with it, but careful kiting and CC helped avoid any Sanguine healing. The final area of the dungeon was now all that stood before Perplexed, and at 80% enemy forces, they only needed to pull a few of the packs. They combined several pulls that featured multiple Echo Knights, creating a dangerous melee situation, but avoiding having too many casters involved. Then they popped defensive and offensive cooldowns to make sure that the pack died before they did. As the pack got low, they kited to avoid Sanguine healing, something that would have been much harder if there were many more casters in this pull, masterfully managing the affix and losing almost no time to it. A Shine used Shroud of Concealment once more to let Perplexed walk past all of the remaining enemies, but they still needed one pull to hit 100% enemy forces, so Divine grabbed the four remaining enemies guarding the doorway and wasted no time leaping in and blasting the last boss with his Grief Torch. Trash into bosses is scary at the best of times, but here they again needed to manage the Sanguine Affix, something that could be especially challenging on this boss because of the Power Vacuum cast that grips all players under boss and then roots the boss for a while while she casts. If that were to happen while mobs were dying, it would be almost impossible to avoid 20% or more of the boss's health getting healed, so Perplexed made sure to respect that possibility and time their kills so that the enemies had no chance of healing the boss. Even when there was only one Echo Knight left, Swag gripped it out away from the boss before it died so that it could not slow them down. We hope you've enjoyed this breakdown of Perplexed's Algathar Academy. Be sure to tune in for the next two weekends for MDI Group C and the Last Stand Tournament, where the final four global finalist teams will be decided. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in Azeroth.